this is going to be a series on form in cycling. You look at any other sport, you know, running, football, hockey, anything else, there's a massive emphasis placed upon uh, the form that you do the exercise with. So uh, whether that's uh, taking a slap shot in hockey, making a pass, uh, dribbling a football, it, there's there's very specific skills and form. And, and we have the same thing in cycling, and, and uh, a lot of that is sort of on the racecraft side of things. But... For the training stuff, there's a there's a lot that can be said for your actual form on the bike and gaining efficiency uh, through better form. And I've had to do a fair bit of research myself on this. A lot of this is, is stuff that I've come to uh, myself through my own training. And, and I think it's just a really good discussion to have and, and a really important thing to highlight because we can always get stronger, we can always get fitter, but we can get more efficient and go faster. So it's sort of optimizing our fitness and our power. So first thing I wanna say, if you haven't already, go get a bike fit from a reputable bike fitter. Um, it's gonna make a world of difference and just to have somebody else who knows what they're doing look at your biomechanics and be able to put you, set you up on a bike in order for you to be able to produce the most amount of power in the most efficient position for you is so incredibly important uh, you know you don't buy a new pair of shoes or running shoes just based off how they look or you know i hope you don't um, you go in there and you talk to a running expert and they say hey these shoes are going to fit your needs and uh, maybe they sort you out the insoles maybe you have custom orthotics so keep take that same mindset to the bike which i arguably is even more important because rather than just fitting your your foot your whole body is fitting on it. So every contact point, you know, you've got uh, you've got five contact points on the bike and they all should fit well and allow you to produce the most amount of power. So that's the first thing I wanna say. So today is all about climbing and, uh, and our climbing form. And I'll, I'll make a couple other videos. Uh, you, you got sprinting, uh, time trialing form, a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> sitting in a draft, you know, I, all, of, all of this stuff requires subtly different techniques and forms on the bike to get the most out of. So today, all about climbing, my favorite discipline, uh, coincidentally, and the, the thing that I have thought about the most simply because it pertains the most to what I do on a on a day-to-day -day basis and sort of my specialty within the sport. Okay, so first thing we're going to talk about is seated climbing, and I've got the videos up in front of me and uh, I've got a whole ream of notes here so I'm going to be looking down and I'll, I'll put the video up uh, on the big screen here so we'll go ahead and play it right now and this is just a shot of my uh, one of my PR attempts up Cyprus uh, not going for you know uh, the fastest time necessarily uh, but just going for for maximum power and I had a car to set pace for me and just try to simulate a, a, a pack draft essentially. So a couple things I want to highlight here. So we've got start at the foot. So you can sort of see here my heels pointed slightly down on this side. And a good cue that I find for this is you want to think about scraping mud off the bottom of your shoe. And you wouldn't scrape mud off the bottom of your shoe with your foot pointed toes down. So you want to bring the heel down, not pronounced, uh, not in an uncomfortable way, but bring it down a little bit. It's going to allow you to engage your hamstrings and glutes and whole posterior chain a little bit more. And because of the grade of climbing, we tend to settle back on our bikes a little bit, whether you're in the hoods or on the tops, versus if you're in the drops, you tend to scoot forward a little bit. So bring the heels down a little bit, engage your glutes engage your hamstrings, you're going to be able to produce a, a fair bit more power that way. Um, and it's going to be longer lasting just using larger muscles rather than relying on your uh, quads alone and you know, hip flexors and, uh, and all that. So that's the first thing. Starting at the feet. Moving up. And you can see it really well here. 
that I am rocking pretty hard. And there's sort of two schools of thought for this. There's um, a lot of people don't really worry about it and uh, and they just sort of say, hey, it's, it's you know, what you're naturally gonna do. Then the other school of thought that says you wanna be as stationary on your bike as possible, as tucked in um, to or engage your core as much as you can and uh, and be able to uh, be very stable on the bike and that you look like a robot when you do that. And I, I tend to fall somewhere in the middle of those two. I think that you can differentiate climbing steady or climbing slow on your training rides and when you're doing a full gas effort. Here I'm doing a full gas effort. This was, you know, I was... <laughs> We're getting near the end of the climb here. I'm fully redlined and we're doing about uh, 25 k an hour, 30 k an hour up this climb. Um, I'm, I think I'm still in the bigger in there. And so I'm not really thinking about it. I'm doing what's gonna be naturally the most efficient for me. Um, I have a fairly strong core and I still rock a fair bit, especially when I'm doing really hard, intense efforts. If I'm doing a steadier effort, um, you know, threshold efforts or um, or below. I tend to I tend to cue myself to to try to stay quite steady on the bike. But I don't think having uh, I don't think trying to be as like a robot on the bike is going to necessarily be most advantageous. I think you do have to move a little bit to pull on the bars like this a little bit, um, and uh, and it also it does help engage your core. Right, if you're moving slightly, it's going to help engage different core muscles. Moving up, so we got that. See if I put my hands back on the hoods here. Yeah, there we go. And we'll just skip ahead here, nice and close. Okay, so moving down my hands, you can see my elbows are, are bent a little bit. Um, when you're doing a max effort like this, you tend to be pulling the bike towards you, forcing yourself into the saddle so you can produce as much power as possible. I find it comes quite naturally rather than being perfectly you know, straight armed on the bike um, you do you are going to lose some some power that way um, one thing i would say is be very cognizant of what you're doing with your hands so if you're on the tops thumb underneath it's it's pretty basic stuff right if you hit a rock and your thumbs aren't you know same if you're doing uh same if you're benching right if you're it's thumbs thumbs under the bar at all times at that little safety so same thing if you're on the tops thumbs under um, it's also going to allow you to pull a little bit more and have more control over the bike when you're in the hoods like i am here you want to have your thumb it's not underneath the hood it's almost around the top of the of the brake lever so you can see my fingers here on the brake lever my thumb almost comes around the other side like that Let's see if i come any closer so you can sort of see it here my thumb isn't underneath it's sort of resting there but that is going to really allow you to grip the hood well and pull the bike towards you so you can see here i'm rocking a little bit but i'm pulling the bike towards me on every pedal stroke um, i'm also in an absolute world of hurt and only focused on uh, the power i'm doing and the bumper of the car disappearing slowly in front of me so this video here is from my Eversting attempt, and at this point I'm like five hours in. So this is a really good illustration of when your body starts to get extremely fatigued, and how how it behaves differently, and how we should how we should train train ourselves in such a way that when we do get fatigued, uh, we aren't dumping all the form, losing all the form that we worked so hard on uh, when we're when we're super fresh. Not to say we shouldn't. You know, work on form and refresh but um, you can see here you can just see how tired I am in this photo in this video here um, oh yeah I've got salt everywhere and I've got uh, ice down my back because it's uh, I chose the hottest day of the summer to do this Everesting attempt because I am an idiot so I'll wait for me to sit down so you can see here I've got my elbows bent and let's see if my thumb comes into view at all here come on Oh, there it is. So you can see my thumb is looped underneath the bar and or underneath the hood, and it sounds silly, but it's uh, it's a quite an important feature of, 
of climbing well, being able to pull the bike towards you and sort of lock yourself into position there. It helps helps engage everything, engage your core and, and everything. So before we move on to standing, I'll just let this play through. Before we move on to standing, I also want to talk about breathing because breathing is the single most important part of pretty much any effort we do. Um, and you might sort of be surprised at me saying that, but if we uh, if we can't get any air in, if we can't get any oxygen in, we're not going anywhere. So being able to breathe efficiently uh, is I'm getting a, getting a hand up here. And I'm getting being able to breathe efficiently is absolutely critical. I'm gonna rewind this back a little bit. So a couple of cues I like to use here are um, breathing through my stomach, breathing through my diaphragm taking full breaths as long as I possibly can. So if I'm, say I'm doing a VO2 max effort, I'm gonna keep my breathing under control and I'm gonna force my breathing to stay under control as long as I possibly can. And only when, you know, I'm really dying does my breathing get super, super ragged. Um, and you can see that in the best athletes in the world, they can maintain their calm, maintain their breathing um, for a very, very long time. Part of this is keeping your jaw relaxed. It seems like a very silly cue, but uh, jaw relaxed and open is going to allow for maximum airflow in. Having your jaw relaxed is also gonna relax your back. And that is going to allow your lungs to expand that little bit more. So we wanna think every tiny little thing we do is gonna have an effect that way. So breathing through your stomach, full breaths, jaw relaxed, and almost call it Python breathing. You just jaw relaxed and you're just sucking as much air in and I had a coach and he would always say uh, you know some you were really coming you're coming up a hill and you're really hurting and your mouth was wide open and say oh that guy's sucking the life out of the world so and I think that's a really good cue suck the life out of the world yeah you can just see me dying here <laughs> slowly slowly but surely that was a rough day um, so let's move on to standing, and I think earlier in this video there's a good, uh, let's see if I can, yeah, there we go. All right, let's do that. Okay, standing. Very different cues from seated climbing. Obviously, you're in a completely different posi position on the bike. So a couple key things here. You can see in this video here that I've got my arms it's definitely a lot straighter than uh, than when I was seated, but I'm holding a lot of my weight on my arms. I've also got my elbows slightly bent because I'm rocking the bike and I'm pulling the bike side to side. Being able to rock the bike side to side like this is a very important skill to be able to maintain consistent power output when you are climbing because rather than having your head bob up and down, you kind of see in this video, my head's gonna stay reasonably level right here and my bike is going to move down to take up that that uh, because when I'm extending my leg rather than my uh, my head bobbing up my bike is moving to the side to accommodate for that so you can see here I'm supporting my weight on my triceps here and through my legs so I'm almost on a stair stepper motion and the, the grade is quite steep so it's quite pronounced I think that's 14 or 15 percent there um, you can see all the salt on me, and let's just back that up. So you can see here, I'm pushing through my hamstring. Uh, I've got ice shoved down my uh, shoved down my shorts here. That's that guy there. So I'm pushing through my glute, through my hamstring, like that. Pushing down on the pedal, and my heels are. Um, it's sort of hard to tell, but uh, they're up a little bit. Let's see if we can get a good view. Yeah, you can see they're up a little bit. They're at a 90 degree angle to my leg. And um, so your calves are gonna be quite engaged when you're doing this. I wanna talk about, there's there's two different sort of styles of, of standing and they happen, they occur naturally. And you'll notice very quickly which one you're doing when you do it. First one is what I'm doing in this video here. And that is I am not going flat out. I'm going you know, reasonably hard, but I'm not going flat out. And so it's almost a lazy motion. It's almost a lazy back and forth, back and forth, back and forth like that. 
yep, sort of a lazy, I'm, I'm just getting up the mountain. And that is a very different form than you would do if you were, say, attacking. That is going to be more of a sprint form from the hoods. And in that form, see, see if I can find some video footage of it here and, and overlay it. But you're pulling your elbows in towards your torso a little bit. Contador is famous for doing this. Um, because you're accelerating so hard, you're pulling, you're reefing up on the bike side to side, fighting, fighting the bike to get as much power out as you possibly can. And those are two different forms of standing. The first one, uh, it should be maintainable for quite a while. The main purpose of it is to just shift the, uh, shift the muscle usage around, so it gains some relief from your seated position. If you're in an effort and you're going flat out, you don't really need relief from, from that effort as such, because if you're going flat out, everything is gonna be hurting. Being able to attack and accelerate quickly is going to be more it's going to be easier standing up um, and being able to produce quite high wattages is, is almost uh, you have to stand up to be able to do that especially on a climb uh, in most cases so it's a completely different different forms of standing uh, a couple of key things i like to think about are like i mentioned my elbows and that's sort of the only that, that's the biggest difference so you're pulling your elbows in but it's a completely different motion you're engaging your core and you're almost twisting, you're almost twisting the bike to gain as much power out of it as possible. So I hope I found some video to overlay. Um, it's a, there, like I've said a couple times already, they're, they're two completely different things. So that's about it for standing. Um, if you have any questions on, uh, on seated and standing form, uh, leave them in the comments or, uh, or shoot me a message, shoot me an email. Uh, you can find my email on my website. Uh, consider if you found any of this informative at all, please uh, consider subscribing and uh, leave a like and all that good YouTube stuff. I think I got that right. It's the first time I've, I've done that. Um, I don't feel as much like a sellout as I thought I would. So thank you for watching and uh, stay tuned for more of these. Ciao.